Hey guys, I got a bunch more work done on the trailer. I'll show you that in a little while. Uh, but right now the project that I'm working on is, well, on the bench on the left hand side there we see the two black tops. I want to make little pockets that are uh, come up from the front lip of the bench and are able to receive different uh, types of tooling as far as, uh, here we go, we got a grinder. A, uh, a bench vise and over on the floor over in here inside that Greenlee box is a uh, like a porter band and handheld bandsaw that I want to turn into more of a uh, horizontal bandsaw that you can just kind of walk up to and use and also I want to make it so that they are removable so that they kind of you know fit into a pocket and uh, are located but then when you don't need them anymore or if you want to use the bench for a wide open uh, something to work on they are no longer in the way kind of like you know how you have your regular workbench you have your grinders on there but if you're trying to work on something long they uh, of course get in the way so the idea is going to be to make them removable and that's what we're going to work on now having said that i thought i had a, a better setup than what i do this is a like trailer hitch stock. It's very thick walled, two by two. You see it's cut off with a torch, but it looks like quarter inch wall. So I was gonna use that as a, uh, you know, you need a receiver and what's the other one? Emitter, I forget. But gym equipment I do have, it's thinner wall stuff, but it should suffice what I'm trying to do. And again, you can see how it's sleeved one into the other. So a section of this essentially will get welded uh, into the front beam on the bench and this section will be welded to a plate and the plate will be mounted to the different implements so having said that uh, i need to start getting something done and let's do it so the uh, countertops are just floating on there they're not attached to the uh, base at all but they got some decent weight to them so it's not like they're going to flop around so i put a couple of pieces of tape on them just for witness marks so i can kind of return them to the same pl place and i think i'm not going to attach them at all I think I'm going to leave them so that if I need to access the generator or any of the systems underneath it, I can still flip the table up and get to them. But what will keep them from sliding around also will be the sleeves. So I kind of want to cut you know, into the bench. This will be recessed into a pocket into the bench and picture that going right up through it. And then the, the, the counter can't move around at all, but you can lift right up off of that one inch mark and do what you need to do so that should work out okay uh so now i want to go and just try to figure out where i want to put the pockets the vice has a swing of 90 uh, 180 degrees it can go you know boom and then swing all the way around and uh, that should work out good because you never know which you know what you can be working on how you need to go about holding it and it should also work out if i put you know a pocket on the other side if i have the vice on the other end and then probably two more right in the middle. So I think the ends will probably be the best spot to go. Plus I can try and grab a little bit more support from this leg so it'll be just you know, more sturdy than you know, being in the middle a little bit. And nothing saying I can't take it and rotate it, you know, the, the piece that's gonna be sticking out of the bottom of the vise have that rotate also. So I'm thinking that location should be good. And uh, I'll do the two in the middle later we're going to do the ends first we'll start with that so i'm going to go slide that out of the way i'm going to mark it up with some uh, masking tape and then draw on top of it and see how well i can go about cutting this material and see how it fights me i'm not going to give it much hope but we'll see what a regular sawzall a regular uh, jigsaw does with a uh, wood blade on it Except for the fact there's so much tape on it, I can't see where I'm cutting. That's for another job that I didn't scratch it up, you know. We're not worried about scratching this one, I guess. Yeah, let's try it again.
expected. Hopefully that wasn't too vibratey for you guys. All right, for the back row, I'm uh, gonna run a drill down it and, and then uh, slice both directions. So we'll figure we'll give the uh, the new drill a workout. We'll see if it gets warm. Me out, I was cutting it too fast, I think. Drill worked fine. All right, let me see if I can slice it. See if we see my lines anymore. Slice it the other way and get that little nub out of there. Well, I cut it. I made a mess out of it, but I cut it. What I what happened was I drilled it and then I cut both directions and I looked underneath. I'm like, it's it's too far forward. So then I kind of went back and, and did a little more and kind of leaned into it. But what I wasn't aware of is the bench vibrated forward. It wasn't against the wall. So now that I pushed it back, now I got that nice quarter inch gap across the back of it. So live and learn, I guess. Uh, we'll know better on the next one. So uh, probably what I'll do is for the one that gets welded on here, I'll put a piece of steel behind it. Uh, and we'll take up that gap, probably beef up the pocket a little bit. But uh, we'll know better on the next one. Plus that... Um, that jigsaw is a piece of crap, you notice when I was cutting. <laughs> the jigsaw is on an angle like this and I'm trying to go cut straight. Is that enough for excuses? Alright. So now I want to figure out, I'm probably going to do this one all the way through. And if there's any other mistakes that are in it, I'll learn it on this one. And then I'll, I'll make sure that uh, I don't repeat them. So I need to cut the piece that goes on the inside of this. And then make a plate that goes over it. But I think we can kind of go do that in the garage where it's nice and warm. Because out here, it's 26 degrees. Now I just need a base plate. That might take a little while. I was going to go to lunch and let the thing cut because it was going to take so long. A good thing I waited. I think I would have been there a while. I just got to flip it over and let it finish the rest of the cut. Watch your toes. So, I uh, got the vise where it is 90 from each side. Actually, it, it does more than that. It probably does. Probably about 210 degrees. So if I loosen it up, it'll swing, you know, past 90 in a little bit this direction, and again past 90 again in this direction. So either side of the bench I put it on should be fine. Now I want to figure out how to attach it to the plate. I kind of thought about welding it if it's cast steel and not cast iron, but I think I'm going to go ahead with bolting it. Uh, the only problem where I was saying with that. You don't want any hardware kind of sticking out from the bottom of it, so you got to recess the hardware in. So that's what we're probably going to go with. And I just wanted to make sure I had something that had the capacity of giving me that after I drill the hole. So I, I do believe I do. I do believe that I do. I'm going to go to lunch and uh, take a break, get the garage warm up, and then we're going to attack this. Well, the weather's getting ready to turn on us. We're supposed to get a a nor'easter they call her. So I figure I'd go grab and walk around the uh, trailer and kind of show the updates on the trailer while we still have the capacity to do so. So the gas tank has now been relocated to this side. And uh, it's just a boat gas tank with a quick disconnect. Right there you push that in, you can pop the fuel line off. And it's got a primer bulb 
up in that dark corner there. So if you do run it out of gas, it's easy to get it caught up again. It's vented to the outside. You can see the two holes through the wall. And then I still have to run around with silicone and seal up the inside of the box, but it's pretty airtight. And again, there's foam around the door to seal it from the the outer limits there. And that kind of needs a, a nice warm day for it to kind of settle in a little bit. And uh, it's got a little bit of an air gap, I think right here somewhere. Actually, I might've sealed itself already sitting overnight. And these are the same kind of clips that were on my uh, sandblast cabinet. So I like them and I went with those and it just kind of puts constant tension on there. So I use that in a couple of different places. So that's the gas tank and gas line runs up through here, then down and across. I could probably uh, shift the counter away. Show the inside. The gas line is just attached to there. Goes to a fuel filter, which uh, has pretty good access to it. And then to the machine, and then there's a fuel pump right here, so it can draw its own fuel. Height does not need to be an issue. The door has been sealed off with different pieces of scrap metal all the way around. Again, that still needs some foam attached to it, but that's more just for air infiltration when the machine is running. Well, can I get any more out of it? Bear with me. Pop it in the hole. So, um, exhaust is run. I used the old muffler setup. I was going to go bend up my own, but I decided uh, that should probably work out okay. And uh, had some exhaust leaks, which didn't matter when it sat outside, but now that it's going to be, uh, you know, more of an internal machine, you don't want any exhaust fumes kind of leaking out around the cabinet and poisoning you. So they were kind of fixed up. I had to go cut into the muffler. It was This pipe was cracked going inside here. So I peeled this away underneath, welded it, put it back together. And I think on the bottom somewhere, down in that dark corner, the bottom of that flange was cracked away too. And I punched it through the wall. You can see, let's go outside. And uh, I think it's a Ford uh, tractor exhaust. You got a flapper on it. I think that one's on right over there somewhere. And I ran it for about an hour, hour and a half. I wanted to see how the temp did with it. And of course you can see where it turned the muffler, but it doesn't seem like it heats up the body too much. This is just aluminum anyway. But I wanted to keep it sucked, you know, to the side of the trailer as close as possible. You're really not supposed to uh, go over a certain width, but I figure I'm pretty close to what the wheel well size is and that can come right off too if you loosen that one clamp up on the inside you can wiggle it off and there's just a spring attaching it to the top because that whole thing is um, on motor mount so it, it has the capacity to rock a little bit so i had to make a little bit of clearance for it and i just made a plate to go around it kind of seal off from the outside and when it's running this has a tendency to blow air out again the vent all the uh, air kind of blows out of here and sucks in from underneath the trailer. So air gets drawn in under the trailer, across it, and the engine, and then dissipates out of the box, and it, that area dissipates out is this vent right here. I do have something that goes over the top of this. Um, the thing for car windows, those little uh, stainless trims that you put over your window so you can have your window open without rain coming in. I got a couple of those, so they'll go on the vents. That's the vents for uh, the gas tank. And let me shut you off for a second. I'll put the counters back together and we'll fire. And on this side, I copied pretty much what I did on the other side, which is again, another couple of bales. But I didn't bother putting a seal on it. It's, again, it's you know not that important. So you can do a cold start. Choke. And all the way up is wrong. Would help for turn the batteries on. There we
works out pretty good. It's noisy, yes, but no quieter than having it sit on the back of a truck and make noise. It's actually not that bad, especially when it goes and idles down. And it's not vibrating very much. So I'll let that warm up for a couple of minutes and uh, I'll bring it back and we'll let it idle down and see how that is. And here we are at an idle. Pretty quiet outside. And pretty quiet inside. It's also kind of nice too. If I want heat, I just open that door and the warm air instead of blowing out outside, blows inside here. And that's all automatic. As soon as you put a load on it, it'll kick right up. So we got the compressor here with no air in it. We'll plug that in. That's not very noisy. And just catch right back down again. Chase fuel. And like I said, if you open this door, warm air kind of comes out. I let it run for about an hour, hour and a half with the compressor running the whole time. We just let the air flow through it because I want to put a good load on it and it never got it got up to about 85 degrees inside the cabinet uh, that was when it was 50 degrees out so um, if I have a problem with it where it gets too hot I will put a automotive radiator fan inside that and help draw some of the heat out of there but it seems like it has fairly good flow for it right now I'll leave well enough alone so, just wanted to kind of show that. That's where that stuff is. I'm gonna go jump back on fabricating the uh, the mounts for the uh, different accoutrements. So I got the vise sitting on the plate that it's gonna get mounted to. But I need to make sure the holes are gonna be centered over the holes. And to do that, you use something called the transfer punch. And uh, that's what these are right here. And they're just miscellaneous sizes. And on each one of them, there is, I'm gonna go with probably that one. Each one of them has a nipple on it. And what you do is just drop it in the hole. You give it a whack with uh, a hammer and it just puts a dimple right dead center of the hole. And uh, as long as you don't move anything, you can get all the other ones and you'll be, you know, exactly in the center of them. And uh, so probably what I'm gonna do is I'll do that one and that one. We'll drill those and then I'll put the bolts in it. I'll probably do the other two. So, because if I go to move it, it's gonna get uh, knocked out of whack. But uh, let me get those two taken care of and we'll uh, get to uh, making some uh, little metal shavings. We're gonna wing it. I'm not gonna bother trying to set up clamps and everything for it. We're just gonna kind of go for it. I don't think it's gonna whip this around. I think it'll break the bit off before it does any kind of. Table is tight. Anyway. All right. Going in dry.
through. bolts are uh, might be three A's probably go a little bit larger than it I like using the index for just a quick and dirty to see the size we need you can probably go to either one I probably want a little bit of slop so we'll go with that guy got a brandy new bit in there safety Nazis now. Alright, so let's get that bolted in and uh, we'll mark the two others and do the last two. Well, I was going to use this guy to be our um, recess. Uh, what I noticed though, it's got a taper to it and I don't have the proper collet or chuck to grab that in. And I could probably just, uh, you know, stick it in there and hog our way through it, but I ended up finding just a big ass drill bit that um, has the same taper to it. So. Maybe we'll stick this in there and we'll let this chowder its way through and uh, get it so that well, that guy can sit flush. Let's see how that does for us. I think it's running a little too fast, but uh, so be it. Shatters its way through. Eh, I hear more. Should probably slow it down too, but I'm too lazy. I got them all. Yeah, just a hair more me. Yeah, just a little more. All right, let's see how close we are. I'm gonna clear the pelt. Bingo. And as I said, it's got a little bit of slop in it anyway, so. We're nuts on it, crank that puppy down, and then we'll weld a plate to the bottom of it. Yeah, of course I didn't have any locking 
hardware, so I just went with a double nut on them so they're not going anywhere. Profile's off a little bit. You can see the gaps around the, the head there, but uh, this isn't a government job. This is a vise getting mounted in a trailer. So now uh, we got to make so that plate can attach to the uh, square tubing, and this that fits inside there. Woohoo! So we need to weld that to there, and then that will be the removable piece. So I'm probably gonna flip it upside down. Maybe stick the vise in a vise. Well, the vise is a vise. Maybe you just can clamp it to something upside down. We'll make sure that we're we're fairly square on this guy. Whatever's it's got the better edge on it. Because if it's off on an angle, it's not gonna want to sit flush. I want this to you know make contact with the bench all the way around it. That's the whole idea is that it gives it nice support, you know. So let me get that all kind of cleaned up with a grinder and get some of the crap off it so we get a nice clean weld. I think those two vices should be doing that on YouTube. That's just not right. Ah, but who am I to judge? All right, let's see if we can get a couple of tacks on that and keep her straight. Keep her on a straight and narrow. You know what? I should. I should rotate that. You can ask me why. Why is because that hole is. Um, I'm going to run a, a pinch down the side of it. I'm going to run a pinch bolt in the side of it, and I didn't want it going into that, that hole. Sometimes eyeballing is the best way to go. Or should I change on this job, right? The whole job's been that way. Alright, now we're ready to rock and roll. I think I have a ballast resistor going in the garage. It's got that stink in here. Could be me too. Quick before it lifts. All right, let's make them solid. Block your view. So one thing I didn't think of is when that's going to go drop in, I'm going to have to make sure that that kind of sits a little proud from that to clear the welds. That looks pretty good. And it's starting. I stay like that. Oh. I found our offending smell. <laughs> that was just plugged in. I don't know what the deal is with that. Guess we won't be using that grinder. Yeah. That with the old. It was a piece of shit anyway. <laughs> In Milwaukee, do you make bench grinders? Cool off a little bit. 
So that's what I mean. I just kind of took a, uh, a nut and a bolt and the hole that was already in that guy and ran that in just so I could uh, take the slack out of it when it, it, whatever's mounted in there. Might put a handle or something on it later. But that, that should do it. And this guy was in the on position. I don't know. I don't know if I just pushed it over to the side and it was stalled out on the bench and it caused it to cook. So, my bad. Sometimes you should, uh, might be better off staying inside the house watching videos instead of trying to make videos. But the stand was busted on this anyway. So it was kind of debatable. That just kind of finalized it for me. And it was a dog. It would stall out real easy. But, enough excuses. Alright, let me get that guy cooled off and, uh, Grind some of the paint off of that and get that thing mounted inside the trailer. Get a couple of tacks on that guy. We haven't run the old flux core welder in a while. And it's a lot easier to transport than the other one. Let's go see how that makes up for us. Get spoiled with the Miller with auto set. That's when I gotta remember how to turn the dials. All right, let's see what we get. Of course, we got a lot of stick out. We'll burn that one off. There we You think you should try removing it before we commit? I just leave it right out of there. Easier to weld. Get to put the ground back on. Let's uh, get it out of the way. Boy, am I rusty. We gotta knock it down a little bit. but it won't fall off. Right. Pop that sucker back in there. Watch it don't fit. <laughs> right. 
shut off old Smokey. I got you guys in my hand there. That should be good. That should be good. And then straight ahead. That should be just fine. Gotta just do that four more times. But at least it's just a pocket, not the whole deal. And I think what I might do is make like um like on your two inch trailer hitch you got the little if you don't have a hitch in it you got that little cover. Put you down. Just take that out of the way. And I kind of dropped it down one for the to clear the welds underneath the welds so I kind of like let it recess but I figure what I can do now is make a cap when I'm not using it I can go right over that and kind of fill that void too and I did put a spacer in behind it to take up the gap of the counter that should key the counter so if I have another one of those I figure probably right about here and then we'll do another one, say here, and then on that end, that should be just fine. And that way I could still just lift, take the countertop and lift it up out of the way. So it's been about a half hour. I think it's cooled off enough. Yeah, pretty cool. What do you think? Place your bets. Smoke gonna come out of it, you think it'll fire back up. It really punched out a bunch of smoke. <laughs> See how much confidence I have. Done. Nothing. Give it a whack. For sale. Cheap. Well, it's junk anyway, and I want to take the wheels and the, the wire wheel and the stone off of it. So why don't we uh, do some investigations, see what cooked. Shall we? So always one. Try the other side. <laughs> That's not a pretty color. Yeah, there's your problem. I let just a little too much of the smoke out, I think. It's just crispy. Yeah, that winding got a little hot. Oh well. 
scrap art. And that, guys, I think we're going to go call it a wrap. Boy, I hurt myself today. Yeah, that's up to you too. So, again, thanks everybody for watching, commenting, subscribing. I'll see you in the next one. Later.